right, we get market that's up 200 points, better than 200 points right now. Just off the session highs here, we are climbing because everybody's saying, oh, I don't care about inflation. And that read on inflation that came in a little hotter than expected. And they're thinking, well, maybe these weak retail sales numbers mean that the economy is not as hot as people think. And, of course, the Fed will have to stay active. I don't know as I like that scenario very much because I would like to get off of this Fed sugar high. But joining me right now is the editor and publisher of the Gartman Letter, Dennis Gartman, who's getting uh, increasingly worried. You and I were emailing this morning. I told you, Dennis, I, I'm a little worried about inflation right now. I did not like yeah. what I saw this morning. Your thoughts? Well, and, and, and you shouldn't. Uh, I mean, we are seeing inflationary pressures begin to show up around the board. We're seeing grain prices turning higher. We're seeing meat prices turning higher. Cotton prices are turning higher. Look at what's, what gold has done today. Gold is up demonstrably more than is the stock market, having opened sharply lower this morning after the inflation number, which shows you at times that markets can remain illogical. And look at what's going on in the bond market. The bond market clearly is telling you that, one, the, the great bull market of 35 years in bonds ended almost 16 or 17 months ago. A new bear market has started in bonds. Interest rates are, are trending higher and likely to go higher for some period of time. Not quickly, but over a period of time. So clearly there are inflationary concerns uh, abounding, and, and your concern, I think, was well-placed. I, I was a little surprised that it came in much higher than expected. I expected a little inflation. And I guess, you know, look, you got to see this over a course of months, really, to start to, to get a real picture here, Dennis. But um, yeah. I, I do think it is appropriate to have inflation in our economy. We should have inflation. We haven't had enough. And, and that's uh, in some ways even more concerning because, you know, a deflationary environment is much harder to fight. But, you know, that's that's kind of a, a decent size read for January. Um, and while we want wages to grow, we don't want the price of everything to go up, right? Well, your explanation about 15 minutes ago I thought was very, uh, very uh, apropos. In an inflationary environment, the propensity of people to speed up their purchases of things is, is increased. In a deflationary environment, the propensity of people to defer purchases are increased. And I think that right, what we have right now is a propensity on the part of purchasers. Perhaps we'll see an increase in housing. We're going to see an increase. I, I think the retail sales number was a bit uh, disturbing on the downside, mm -hmm. but likely to be erased next month. Mm -hmm. Inflation is, uh, give me one and a half, give me two percent, give me two and a half percent inflation. I can live with that. The problem that I see is that once inflation gets started, it tends to creep its way to four and five percent over a very, over a protracted period of time. And therein lies the problem. That's what the bond market is worried about. That's what gold is worried about today. But the stock market right now is celebrating the fact that perhaps we're going to have two percent inflation. And that's been the Fed's target. Yeah, I was talking to an investor last night who made a very logical argument for the need for five percent on the 10 year. And his point was, are you really going to tie up yeah. 10 years worth of capital? I mean, who would do that in their right mind, tie up 10 years worth of capital <laughs> at a lousy two, three percent? Uh, if you're in a growing economy, we should be back to a, a 5 percent yield on the 10 year. That's a whole lot more normal. But the effects of that yes. could be significant, Dennis. As I said the other day when I was on your show, I, I'm, I've been in the bond market for a long period of time, and I can remember when, the, when we had a coupon of 14 and a quarter on the long bond <laughs> and when the 8s of 86 sold at a discount. So to me, thinking that we could get the 10-year back to 4% is, is, I think, a, a very simple circumstance. It may take a year or so to get there, but we're going to get there. Can we get to 5% on the 10-year? Yes, of course. And by historical standards, as you, as you just said, even those are, are, are still not... Yeah exorbitant rates of interest and reasonably historically precedented. And would you then be, because I know you're pretty bearish, I, I need you to explain that, because to me yeah. then, if you're saying, okay, it's, it's normal, it's within the historical norm to be looking at 4 or 5% on a 10-year, mm. uh, that's actually healthy in the scheme of things. If you're growing at a fast enough clip, Dennis, then shouldn't that mean the equity market is okay? I will argue and say that what ends up happening at the ends of long-term economic periods of growth, which is what we've had, and we're going to continue to grow. Let's not kid ourselves. This is a very strong economy. But what's happening now is with the monetary authorities reducing their supply of reserves, and they had been the, the great creator of food for the, for the uh, equity markets around the world, they're going to stop or have already begun the process of stopping uh, the injection of reserves into the system and are going to roll off debt. So there, what happens? At, at the end of economic upturns, money has to come out of some place 
to, to, to fund plant equipment and, and labor, yeah. and it comes out of the capital markets. I do think that the highs that we saw in the stock market a month and a half ago are the highs for a long period of time going into the future. And the fact that we've had a nice rebound, and yes, it's up sharply from last night's wor worst levels, but let's remember the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ are still down 5 and 6% from their highs. And I think that the, the fact that we're seeing strength in the markets with, with weakness in the amount of volume is disturbing. So I'm slightly bearish, not demonstrably so, but I am bearish of equities, no Cautious question. Right now. All right, Dennis Gartman, thank you. Yeah. Good to see you.